There's lots of hype about Framer at the moment. People are building some really cool stuff. So today I wanna to give you an introduction to Framer so that you can get started for free. We're gonna build this cool burger website in about 20 minutes. Let's dive right into it. We're building this burger website that I have here on Figma. We're not gonna build the whole thing, just the first few sections. And if you wanna try this along and build the whole thing, duplicate the Figma file below this video. Now, before I get started, I wanna mention that Framer does have a plugin to import your Figma design with one click, and you can do that and it's gonna save you time. But in this tutorial, I wanna teach you the basics and the fundamentals so you understand how Framer will work so that you can actually customize and build whatever you want and not just copy paste and not sure how to handle it once it's there. So let's build this from scratch. First thing I wanna do is I'll bring in the background color. So I'm gonna pick the page for the home page. I'm gonna go here into the styles and I'm gonna paste it in. But also here from the shared color, I'm gonna add this in and I'm gonna call this dark gray just so that I have this because I'm going to be reusing the colors and this will make my work more efficient. Now, the next thing I wanna do is bring in this menu here. Now, Framer already has these kind of components. So I can go here into navigation and I have a dark one here and I can just drag it. Now, the good thing about this is this will make it already responsive with a hamburger menu on mobile and this will save me a bunch of time. Now you can see that when I'm clicking on this, it's purple. If I go here, you get this icon, which tells you that this is a component. Now, if you're familiar with Figma or Webflow, you already know that components are elements that you want to reuse again and again over multiple pages. So this makes sense in um, in a navigation element. And if I double click it, if I'm gonna double click it, I'm gonna go into the components. And now you can see that I can edit it uh, separately from the home page. So this is the master and I can edit it uh, from here and it will change all of the different uh, elements that are reusing this. And you can also see here that it's already set up for the tablet and the mobile when it's clicking. And, and so it's already set up for me. So let's go ahead and edit this. So basically what I wanna do is I'm gonna select this one, change the background color to the color that I already have. Uh, let's go ahead and change, change the fonts. So I'm gonna select all the fonts that I have here, frame or about contact and even in the button sign up. And let's go here into the fonts and basically not select a, uh, a style, but just bow, bow one. This is a Google font that we're using here. Uh, so this is nice. It's already set up for these ones. I actually want them to be um, capital letters. So I'm going to go here into the textiles and transform them into uppercase. This is great for the button as well. Uh, we're gonna dive into buttons a little bit more down the line where we're gonna talk about them as components. But for now, I'm just gonna select this and set the transform for uppercase as well. So basically now we have them. Uh, maybe we wanna change the color of the, the style of the these to this beige color. So let's take this beige color. Oh my God, now I'm gonna have to give this a name and I don't know how to spell beige. So um, let's call this brownie or something like this. I don't know, brownie, brownie. Uh, all right, so I've got this color and for the button, the button is actually purple. So let's do this. Um, let's remove the round corners that we have on this button. So selecting the button here, it has uh, round corners. Where is the round corners? Do, 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 do. Where are they? Gap, wrap radius eight, I'm gonna change that to zero. All right, so the corner radius is back and the color is this purpley, which we're gonna add another as another color, purple. And basically we're done. We have the navigation done. We can of course change how it looks on mobile, but actually everything looks pretty nice right now. And I'm back to the home page. We've got our navigation now. We've got the text. Okay, first, before we're talking about the text, let's talk about layout and how we're gonna set up the layout in general here. So the concept that Framer have created, they're calling it stacks. And if you're familiar with Figma auto layout or with uh, Webflow's Flexbox, it's exactly the same. Actually, when it's going to be turned into code, it, they are actually using Flexbox. So if you're familiar with that, that is a great concept. And if you're not, basically, let me show you how this works. Basically, it's, 
it has an element that either stacks element one on top of another or one next to each other. So let's bring in rows because basically that's that's what we have here, right? We have a few few rows. Actually, we can see this as one row, second row, and third rows, right? So we have here, let's say frame number one, frame number two. Let's copy and paste this so that just so that you can see uh, that we have here that we have as you can see, one, two, three elements here. So these are going to be our sections, right? And you can see that they're stacked one on top of another. They have a gap, which is the space between them. And the reason this is useful is that you can see we can change the direction of the stack. So now we can take columns and turn them into, you know, just rows. And this helps to make things um, easier when we're turning this into a response. And it just helps to make the layout more consistent and easier to yeah, to lay out stuff. So the first fact, actually, let's give this names for clarity. So this is going to be hero text, the first frame hero text. And the second one is going to be the hero image. And then the third thing is going to be this, let's call this uh, hero info, whatever, hero info. So these are the three sections that we have here. Uh, let's just make sure that this frame here is actually all the way from end to end. We can also go here into size and set it as 100%. And this is going to make it, you know, uh, responsive when the screen size changes, which is great. Okay, so now basically for this text, I can just put in a text element from here. However, I want this to animate in a very cool way. Now, here's a nice thing about Framer. They have this supply, which is kind of like ready-made components, which you can just paste into your project. And they have this really nice thing that's called motion text, which allows you to animate text nicely. So let me copy that and actually use that instead of just a normal text element. So I'm coming in into the hero text and I'm pasting after I've copied it from the supply thing. And now you can see that we have this hello world thing. Now just for let's test this out, let's play this around. And you'll be able to see this Hello World thing is animating word by word, right? Hello World. Um, and we can from the settings panel, we can go here and see here's the text that's animating and it's animating by letter, we can do by word or by line, let's actually bring in our actual text. And put it in here. Now we can go here and also change the, the font and stuff. And we, we will do that in a second. But what I want to show you is right now, it's kind of like a design software where you can just place it whatever you want. That's not what we want in a web, we want it to always be either aligned somewhere or centered. So to make sure that this text is always aligned the way that we want it to be aligned, I'm going to go here into the hero text, which is the frame in the web design, we're calling it wrapper because it wraps it contains everything that is inside of it. And I'm going to turn this into a stack as well, right, I'm going to go here into the layout, add a layout. And basically, now this is a stack. Now it's, it doesn't really matter because I have just one element if it's stacked horizontally or vertically, but I just want to make sure that it's centered. Uh, an aligned center. So now you can see I can't move this thing around, it's always going to jump into the center, which is exactly what I want. Now for this motion text, I don't know why it's so small, actually, let's go ahead and set this up to maybe 90% of the width, so that it's quite like this. Let's also go and change the font for this. So from enter, we can use this Bowery forgot the name of this font Bowery one. Uh, we can use something bigger like I don't know, 70, or maybe even 75 here, um, we can make sure that this is something like one. And what is the color? The color is the normal color that we have here, this brownie. Also, we don't need the background color that we already originally have for these frames. So for hero text, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the fill. And this looks quite well, actually, Maybe we just want this, this is three lines. So maybe we want to make this a little bit bigger. So let's go ahead and make this Yeah, something like this looks pretty good. All right. Now let's play this around. You can see that it's already animating pretty cool, right? So this this was easy and very nice. Now let's change this to animate by line, I think this will be more appropriate. So now we have this really nice intro animation for the text. That's great. All right, for the hero image, let's go ahead and bring in this hamburger image. So right inside of it, I have my image right here, I'm just going to drag it in inside. 
And we need to basically do the same thing that we have done previously. Where is the, the burgers? I'm going to put it inside of this hero. Why can't I see it? Oh, for some reason, it's really down here below, which I'm not sure why. Maybe I dragged it below. Okay, but again, I want this to always be centered, just like we had here. So let me go here into the hero image and turn that into a layout that's going to stack it in the center. I also do not need the background image here. And I want this image to be as big as it can. So let's turn it into 100% width, uh, maybe 90%, right? Something like this. Okay, so this looks good. Also, maybe if I try to resize these elements a little bit. I wonder if I can get them to yeah, go a little bit on top of it, which is pretty nice. All right. Okay, so we've got the image here. Actually, let's animate the image as well, the, the burgers as well, right? Because now we have the burgers and the text is animating. So let's do that. The text is animating and then the burgers come on top. This is really easy to do. I'm going to select the burger image and I'm going to add here an effect. And this effect, let's do an appear effect. And uh, let's do, yeah, when it appears, scale in. Um, let's try scale in or scale in button. I don't even know what that means, but let's, let's test it. Out. Let's play it around. Let's reload this. And you can see that, yeah, it is appearing now, same way, but maybe let's try to delay this a little bit. Right, so we're in the effect. We can uh, maybe just go ahead and see the spring and delay it by half a second so that first the text will show up and then the burgers will show up. Let's see how that looks. All right, so that's better, right? Text is showing, burger is showing. Looks pretty good. All right, the next section that we have is we have this burger yellow, uh, not yellow, greenish section with some text here. Let me grab the green color. So here for this one, actually, it's a good idea to have this, uh, to have this fill color, but let's just change it to this green. And let's call it green. And also this section probably needs a corner radius because we can see here that there's some corner radius. So let's go here. I'm just going to play this by eye, something like this. And uh, what else this, this thing has, right? So it has a little bit of spacing. I think we should probably go here into all of these rows and add a tiny bit of gap maybe between these elements or maybe this for this hero burger, uh, maybe we can add a little bit of padding from the top just to push it. So on the layout front, you can see that we have padding here. And I'm gonna just add padding from the bottom. So this is bottom, yeah, I can push it around like this a little bit. And let's just space things out. So that's more Yeah, nicely. And for this hero thing, maybe let's set the size to maybe just 90% something just like this. All right. So now that we have this frame, this frame, you can already see that it has two columns inside of it. What that basically means is that we're going to turn that into a layout that stack things one next to another, right? So let's add some frames inside. Let's add a layout frame in here and let's copy and paste that. So we have two frames here. Let's make sure that the frames are actually trying to fill in as much of the space that they have. So that we have here like split screen. So now we have the layout of this section. Actually, we can go ahead and add a little bit of padding just to make sure that there it's, it's spaced nicely, which is what we need here. And we can add a little bit of space between these elements. All right, so we've got the element. Now we just need to add the content. So for this one, we can add text. So let's add the text burgers above, of, above all burgers. Let's add this in here. And of course, we want to first style it. Now in this case, it's a good idea to use these styles that are already here so that we can reuse them. Uh, H1 was probably this and we didn't use this because we used the component, but this one let's use an H2 uh, and make sure that it's the font that we want, um, the size that we want, maybe it's like 35 or 40, something like that. Um, actually, that was a size, sorry. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, I want to make sure that it's aligned and I want to make sure that it's not 
too big as it is right now, right? So I'm going to add a maximum, maximum width of 100%, right? So that it's not too big. And for this frame, how do we align stuff? We add a layout and we make sure that it's, yeah, it's centered maybe to the top. So now we have this nice thing. It's not all caps, so we can go into the text uh, style and we can change that to uppercase. So this is nice. Probably maybe I need it to be bigger, right? So the text should be bigger. Uh, that would be easy to change just the size. And we don't need the background of this frame that we have here. So I'm going to remove the fill color and basically going to do the same thing for this element. Actually, you know what? It's probably going to be easier to just duplicate this row that we already have here. And this just change from the, the H2 to a paragraph, which we can of course, or also edit the font, um, edit the font, maybe select a dark, dark gray. Uh, this is actually not the font that I want here. So here we do need something like enter um, and add some kind of a lorem ipsum font that we can use. Uh, maybe bigger, a little bit bigger, I guess. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And maybe I'm kind of like a semi bold thing. All right, the last thing that I want to add is this button here and use this as a way to introduce buttons as components. So let's bring in a button, I can search here for a button component and just bring it in here. Now, I want to turn this thing into a component. And why? Because a button, as you can see on this website, we're using it here. And here we're reusing this element, but at different variants, right? Sometimes we change the, in, the, the color or the hover situation. So we want to be able to reuse this and maintain the same style. So I'm going to click, right click, create a component. Um, yeah, let's call this button. And now we can go ahead and style this. In this case, the styling that we want is uh, for this variant, uh, for the main variant is let's do the brownie thing for the text inside. I'm going to use um, the, the brown, the bowlery font, I'm going to make it dark. So we basically uh, style this whatever we want, we don't want a radius color, uh, don't want a radius corner, maybe I want a little bit more padding from the sides. So left and right, I'm going to add a little bit more padding here on the layout panel. So that's going to give a little bit more spacing here. Now, here's what I really wanted to show you. I also actually want to add a border. So I'm going to add a black border and also going to add a shadow because we have this kind of like a drop shadow, harsh drop shadow here. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, not blurry. We don't want any any blur to this. So zero blur a little bit of spread, one spread, and then maybe like four and four. All right, so we've got the button. But now I want to design what happens when people hover on top of it. And I do that by adding another variant, which is the hover one. So in this case, what I want to happen is let's say I want the uh, the background to change to maybe purple, and I want the the shadow to kind of like go back inside. So it looks like I've actually clicked it. So let's go into the shadow and change the distance to zero and zero. All right. So now let's see how that looks. So basically, you can see here that I have the button, let's play this around. And I have this button, which is animating on the hover state. Now the next step would be to turn all of this into responsive and add the other sections, but that's beyond the scope of this video. So let's conclude it. Let me know if you're interested to learning more about Framer. And if you want to learn about, I hear a lot of discussions about what's the difference between Framer and Webflow, which one of them should I check? I made a video on the topic, so you want to check it out here. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.